Happy New Year and welcome to another great episode of What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. And I'm Essence Samaje. And I'm Courtney Michonne. Onika McLean is off tonight, so ladies, let's get a quick take on what's popping. First of all, how was your New Year's? It was great. It was. I did a lot, actually. I had my family down with my friend's house, and I had a dream board slumber party. Nice. That's so cool. Really so cool. cool. Right, really cool. My first time trying it. You guys should try it, too. But I'll tell you more information about it later. <laughs> what about you? I went to a private house party, so I didn't even come into... Uh, the mayhem and the craziness at, at uh, Times Square, but I heard it was oh. awesome. But I had a really good time with friends. Yeah, me too. I just yes. stayed home, and then I went out to party with my friends, and it was good. So, yes, What's the 411 TV released its list of the 25 most interesting people of 2015, and Harry Belafonte and Steven Summerstein are tied at number one. Serena Williams is second. She's awesome. Oh, Beyonce's Serena. father, Matthew Knowles, is third on the list. Valentino Carlotti and Gilda Squire, the team behind Misty Copeland, we talked about her a mm -hmm. lot. The first African American prima ballerina yeah. yes. at the American Ballet that was Theater big. came yeah. in at number four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And award winning author James Patterson of the Alex Cross series of novel novels is number five. To see the full list, check out our website at what's the four and one dot com. Mm. And Moving on, more quick <laughs> takes. Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel in the hot seat recently announced changes after the latest police-related shooting. Emanuel rushed back from a vacation after the fatal shootings of 19-year-old Quintonio Legreer and 55-year-old Betty Jones by a Chicago police officer. Protesters have been calling for the mayor's resignation. Wow. Yeah. Craziness. The Hollywood Reporter is reporting that Samuel L. Jackson has become the highest grossing actor of all time. Surprise. Wow. The tabloid, stating sources from the Guinness Book of World Records, says Jackson's films have grossed more than $7.4 billion, guys. Wow. It's crazy. How are you surprised? Funny. He's in, like, every movie, uh, every true. commercial. That's true, though. He that's does true. so much. Yes. But, you know, you He's just don't, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't, it's I don't like, know. He'll do any role. That's the thing about Samuel L. Jackson. He'll do any role, a small role or a big role. And so, go past you. You wouldn't recognize how much he's working. Wow, he yeah. It that, adds up, I guess. He's yeah. the hard, hardest working man in show business. Mm -hmm. like, and he's also a great actor, so mm -hmm. people cast him for a lot of different things because he wears so many hats with so many different roles, you exactly. know. Exactly. It can be, you know, gay to the crackhead or you could be the president of the United States, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> so on, or on a plane. Or on a plane. Or snakes on a plane. Oh, Lord, <laughs> yes. Well, the honors keep coming off of Taraji P. Henson, our girl, mm. Cookie. The Empire Star has been named Entertainment of the Year by USA Today. Nice. Mm -hmm. And wedding bells will soon ring for former Cosby Show star Keisha Knight Pulliam. Aww. So Pulliam got him an engaged to former NFL star Ed Hartwell. And posted on Instagram by saying, happy to spend not only my new year, but my life with this guy. Hashtag blessed beyond measure. And you know that uh, Ed Hartwell is the former husband of Lisa Wu from the Royal Housewives of Atlanta. Oh, okay. I that's season one. Okay. Um, and former uh, Destiny's child, Latoya Luckett, has announced her engagement to Rob Hill Sr. Oh, oh very nice. nice. Very Congratulations nice. to all the new oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And long live the queen, Aretha Franklin, in a tribute to singer-songwriter Carole King, brought the house down and brought tears to President Obama's eyes at the recent Kennedy Center Honors, just like a natural woman that she is. Yes, she so is. That's awesome. Yeah. I love seeing the greats still doing their thing and putting out new music mm -hmm. and being more kind of modern with it, too. Yeah, I mean, she, you know. She so comes out. Gladys Knight, you, did you see her song or her video? She has a video playing. Does she? I yeah. haven't seen it. But they're timeless artists, so they're going to mm -hmm. be around forever. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that, that voice. Oh, powerful. And in Saturday news, we say goodbye to William Guest, who was best known as a member of Gladys Knight and the Pips. Speaking of Gladys Knight, mm -hmm. he passed away at 74. And renowned psychiatrist Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, the author of The Ice Papers, The Keys to the Colors, has died at age 80. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the rest sports world, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I said rest in peace. Yeah, exactly, yeah. rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And the sports world is mourning the passing of these greats. Harlem Globetrotter legend and basketball hall of famer Meadowlark Lemon has died at age 83. Mm -hmm. Also fellow Globetrotter uh, General Lee uh, Holman has died at age 61. Mm -hmm. And former Major League Baseball star David, Dave Henderson has passed away at age 57. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are all the greats. Peace. Yeah. And these are quick takes for this week. We'll be right back with what's popping. Keep it right here. Mom, can 
Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 4 and one Now we're talking about what's poppin'. Well, she was truly unforgettable. Grammy winner uh, Natalie Cole has died at age 65. Mm -hmm. So yeah. sad. Cole, yeah. the daughter of the legendary singer Nat King Cole, died on New Year's Eve at Cedar sinai Hospital in Los Angeles. Her family released a statement saying that she died due to ongoing health complications, mm -hmm. oh, which wow. I never ever had record of or never uh, knew about that. I didn't know either. I mean, I only knew when I when I realized that she died. I was yeah. like 65. She's yeah. kind of young, young to be yeah. Yeah. dying. And so I looked it up, and it turned out she had hepatitis mm -hmm. due to a long, an ongoing drug problem that she had. Wow. Um, yeah. So well, she's her, been clean for some time, but you know, she got it from that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, her family, her family released a statement saying that she died uh, due to the ongoing uh, health complications, mm -hmm. and that Natalie fought a fierce and courageous battle, dying how she lived with dignity, strength, and honor. So yeah, rest in beautiful. peace for Natalie Cole. I know. It's, it's another so amazing artist that mm -hmm. we're, you know, this, we're losing. So rest yeah. in peace to Natalie Cole. I know. Condolences to her family. For real. Really. Yeah. Yes. Unforgettable. For real. And, oh Lord, there are more woes for Bill Cosby in the new year. After battling allegations from more than 50 women that he drugged and sexually assaulted them in incidents dating back to the 1960s, Cosby is facing criminal charges for the first time time. Andrea Constan, a former employee at Temple University, we discussed it in previous shows, Cosby's alma mater said he assaulted her back in 2004. She made a, com a criminal complaint back then, but the DA did not find enough evidence to prosecute at the time. Constance then filed a civil suit in 2005, which was settled for an undisclosed amount a year later. Ironically, though, it's that 2005 deposition that Cosby gave and came to light last year when everyone was talking about it that the newly elected DA used to charge Cosby just days before the 12 year statute yeah. of limitations was set to run out. Yeah. So Cosby is charged with felony, felony aggravated indecent assault and if he is found guilty the 78 year old could face up to 10 years in prison. It's so basically so he would die in prison. It's That's ridiculous horrible. how yeah. they're defaming his character because they don't have hard proof and you know, I Just really give side. it up to his, to his attorney, uh, Monique Presley, for standing up for him and giving mm -hmm. straight facts. Because it's, I feel like a lot of the media have a big um, influence on everyone's opinions on it, and that's right. really pushing other people who have worked with him, you know, to take away his Hollywood star and to take away when there's. It's not going to happen. He's not. He's not. His star is not going to be taken away. The 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 legacy that he's built has been tarnished. Yes. His, but he's his all, shows off gonna air, have his shows off air, it, it's ridiculous. Show. And you know, he's older now, he's done so much, and for to see this happen, it's really sad, I unfortunate. Mean, yeah. Because until proven yes. guilty, that's when you should take action. So I think it's unfair and unjust. Well, yeah, I mean, you're reflecting the, the, point, the point of view of a lot of people who are fans of Cosby, have, you know, grew up with him, know him to be a, a pillar of the community, respect him a lot. But no, you know no, what? it's if not even that. Women, I don't, and I'm not comparing, you know, I'm separating him from the Huxville, and mm -hmm. I I'm, I'm, am speaking on him on behalf of the justice system, not on, of him as, like, a character. You know. Okay. Well, well. Again, we don't know. Like you said, we have no idea what actually True. happened. Yeah. He's yeah. going to have a trial. He's going to be, you know, going through the steps, and we'll see if he's convicted or not. Yeah. But it looks really, really, really In bad. In the media, it's crazy. Really well, yeah. hopefully everything works out, and they'll come to an agreement, and you know, this will all be behind him. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Well, when we return. Our beauty contributor, Essence Samaj, is going to give us some tips on staying balanced and, and being a happier person in the new yes. year. Stay right here. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, <laughs> what would the neighbors think? <laughs> Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing. We're just playing. I'm trying to get you out of here. Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to What's the 411 and our Fab 411 segment with our beauty contributor, Essence Samaj. 
Hello, you guys. So <laughs> happy new year again. Yes. I say that because what does everyone want to do for the new year? They want to start over on a new slate or some people just continue to do the same things. One thing you should always be is happy, right? We always want to be as happy as possible. And I realize, you know, I have friends, sometimes people go through depression, and I realize what makes me happy and what can make me happier. And so I'm not happy when I'm not doing what I love. And my main focus in life is, because that's what you're supposed to do, is find your purpose. The key is to find your purpose. And my main focus is right now is getting my career together. You know, you're young, you're in college. For the college kids, focus on your career. If there's anything else, any negativity in your life, you just focus on something that makes you happy. Right? right, right. Seems simple. Like, That's do true. you ever feel down and out without an exact reason to why? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes, Sometimes yeah. And, and if you're ever confused, like, I don't know why I'm upset, I can't pinpoint it, it's usually because you don't, don't have um, the purpose. You need to go, go back to what your purpose is in life. And so I, I'm reading this book. It's called The Four Agreements. And it's really good. I follow these keys, the four steps um, there for them. Be impeccable with your word. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? That's Seems simple. Good. You know, yes. speak with integrity. Um, say only what you mean and avoid using the word to speak against yourself. That's mean, that's what they mean by that. Um, don't take anything personally. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in life take True. things personally, you know, um, by what people say. And honestly, anything what someone says to you, anything negative, anything mean, is a reflection of themselves. It right. has nothing to do with you. So if someone calls you out of your name, you should just laugh in, in the face of them, of the, mm -hmm. in the face of ignorance, any type of ignorance, anything racial, uh, any, any racial persecution, mm -hmm. or anything, you know, that's prejudiced, anything just stupid and imbecile-like, you know, <laughs> laugh at <laughs> that. I like that. that. And <laughs> be happy, because you can't let people get you off track, and you have to stay and focus on your purpose, right? right? Also, don't make assumptions. A lot of people make assumptions, and it causes negative energy when you make assumptions. Oh my gosh, preach! Yes. <laughs> like they preach say, <laughs> <laughs> You'll make an A out of you and me if you make assumptions, mm -hmm. right? right? So you find the courage to ask questions to express what you really want and communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings. Also, last but not least, always do your best. And it's so simple yes. and so easy. Mm -hmm. You can always remind yourself that, okay, I'm going to do the best I can, right? Because when you do your best, you're going to change from the moment to, you're going to change from moment to moment, and it will be different when you're healthy and up, as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. So, so those are the four things, agreements that you should make this year wow. and focus on. And what I've done with my friends on New Year's Eve, we sat down, we had yes. um, dream tell boards. Us, tell party. us more. I'm like, okay. So, you know, Take dream boards are really good because <laughs> it's visual. You know, you can look at it every day, cross through it, and... Other than dream boards, you should always make a list of goals because it's more detailed and organized. So those are some of the things you should focus on to help yourself be a happier person into 2016. Hey, very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> very enlightening. Uh -huh. I know. I feel, I feel lighter right? already. <laughs> and when you're smiling, you know, smiling makes you happier on the inside. You're going to help your chakras balance your chakras. Yes, and, and just being happy and ha spending time with your friends also does release um, endorphins, which mm -hmm. is like a chemical that gives off. It's like the happy chemical within mm -hmm. your body that gives off so to make you feel upbeat and, you know, happier. Yeah. So That's true. thank you very much, Miss Essence. Samaje. <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, somebody's getting called on the carpet, so stay tuned. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 411. You know there's always someone to call on the carpet, and this week, Kizzy will have the honors. Mm. In a year <laughs> defined by the declaration Black Lives Matter, we yes. close it out with yet another case that seems to prove that they don't matter. The cops involved in the shooting death of Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old boy in Cleveland, yes. who was shot mm. while holding a fake gun in the park, will not face any criminal charges. Wow. The Ohio prosecutor, Tim McGinty, in this case, said, given this perfect storm of human error, mistakes, and communications by all involved, by all involved that day, right? The evidence did not indicate criminal conduct by the police. Now he went on to say, it is likely that Tamir, whose size made him look much older, 
and who had been warned his pellet gun might get him into trouble that day, either intended to hand it over to the officers or show them it wasn't a real gun. But there was no way for the officers to know, to know that because they saw the events rapidly unfolding in front of them in a very different perspective. Now, people took a lot of issues with that statement. First of all, it seems like McGinty's trying to blame Tamir for his own death, saying, oh, well, he's bigger for his age, and people warned him. He's 12. He's 12, right? And there's no mention that Tim Lohman, the cop who shot Tamir, less than two seconds after arriving on the scene. Remember, he said he, he gave three warnings right. to put it away. How could you Disgusting. do all of that in less than two seconds? That's what is proved by the tape. So... That guy, that cop, was forced to resign from another police department, this one in Independence, Ohio, because he was too unstable to be a cop. Wow. And his firearm performance was dismal. So mm -hmm. where's the blame? Like, why is that? Why is there no mention of that? Since you're talking about everybody involved mm -hmm. made mistakes, exactly. right? There's no discussion about that. So he should, that guy, again, he should not have even been on another force. And as for the family of Tamir Reif, they, of course, very upset about this, and they released this statement. Prosecutor McGinty deliberately sabotaged the case, never advocating for my son, and acting instead like the police officer's defense attorney. In a time in which a non-indictment for two police officers who have killed an unarmed black child is business as usual, we mourn for Tamir and for all of the black people who have been killed by the police without justice. In our view... This process demonstrates that race is still an extremely troubling and serious problem in our country and the criminal justice system. So, I'm calling on the carpet, Ohio Prosecutor Tim McGinty and the criminal justice system that continues to blame black victims for their own deaths. It's horrible. It seems yeah. like this justice system, they like to make excuses mm -hmm. for black lives that are going to waste instead of bringing them justice, so it's very disappointing, and I'm used to it now at this point. It's so sad. I mean, it, isn't it sad? I mean, 2015, literally, it was just case after case after case. I mean, it's just like, it's dizzying. You can't even keep them straight anymore because exactly. there's so many. Mm -hmm. It's happening. It's it seems like, uh, you know, once a month, something, or every other month, something's going on where, you know, yeah. a, a young black man has been shot to death by police officers. I mean, is, all around the country. Is there going to have to be a revolution for there to be sickening. a change? We don't, I don't know. Do you, I mean, you know, I always have to hit them in the pocketbooks or something. You know, when, when, you know, we stop buying stuff, all of a sudden people say, oh, whoa, whoa, you know. Sometimes it's You're not buying anything. We got to get mm -hmm. you back in the stores. Let's make some changes. I mean, something has to happen. Yeah, people can't get used to this nonsense. They actually have to take action and do something about it. Yeah, I mean, Black Lives Matter, they're trying. Yes. They're trying very hard, you know, to do what they do. But again, you know, even you see what happened in, in um, that... Uh, in Oregon, what's happening right now in yes. Oregon, where that, that whole white militia, 150 armed men, took over a federal building and is saying, you are not taking us out of here by force. If you do, we will shoot. <laughs> we are prepared to defend our right to be here. And wow. there are no cops. Not one. There's nothing. They're refusing to engage because they're talking about Waco and all this stuff. Right. But I'm like... Can you imagine, and people have said this on social media, it's, can you imagine if there were black people doing this? Absolutely. Brown people, are you kidding me? They'd be dead by now. And it's almost like they're making excuses to yeah. save their lives. Right. It's so funny. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, it's true. That's a, like, it's hilarious. Yeah, if it wasn't so sad, it would be hilarious. I don't, I don't understand. That's yeah. really sad. Well, yeah. when we come back, we will have Kizzy's Caribbean cookup, so stay tuned for more. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Mm. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to What's the 411. Now we have Kizzy with her Caribbean cookup. Yes. There's a pot, Kizzy. Yeah, oh, no. No, Nick going to be like, what's for dinner, pot? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. But have you guys seen Justin Bieber's video for Sorry? Have you seen I it? did, yes. yes. So clips of it. Right? It's hot. I like it a lot. I like the song also. Uh-huh. Well, the Jamaican dance hall community is saying that Bieber isn't the only one who should be singing Sorry. Mm -hmm. His choreographer, 23-year-old Paris Gebel, 
clearly being influenced by dancehall and used at least 10 dancehall moves in the video, according to the Jamaica Star, mm -hmm. should also apologize for not acknowledging dancehall in her interview with the Rolling Stone magazine. What'd she say? Listen, bro. <laughs> she said, when she said she got her inspiration from, I don't really like to anticipate or pre prepare things. For me, it's all about being impulsive with exactly how I feel at that moment. With the song, with the people around me. I'm always inspired by the moment. The song, the imagery in the room, it's all about the moment. Dance hall fans were not having it. it and blasted her on Instagram. So much so, she threatened to shut down, excuse me, to block people because of their negativity. In a Facebook post, she tried to defend herself by saying, in part, if you know me personally or have worked with me before, you will know that I love dance hall and have such a huge respect and passion for it. A lot of my routines before Sorry have been inspired by dance hall. Just know I have the most respect and love for dance hall, and I am sad to think people think I'm using and stealing, which I'm not. When I teach my classes or talk to people, I always speak my inspiration for this style and culture. Some fans are not convinced, though. <sighs> They want a formal apology. What do you ladies think? Well, looking at the interview that she did, because um, I don't know her personally, mm -hmm. it seemed like she doesn't genuinely respect Dancehall because she would have given him credit in the printed copy of the magazine <laughs> right. and not just on social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, sh why is she getting so defensive? She should just be saying sorry. You know? <laughs> she could be saying, I'm sorry. Uh -uh. Well, maybe like, she wanted to what seem she as if she came up with all came the moves up taking herself, credit. It's kind of And it was original. I mean, some people may not be familiar with dance hall uh, moves and dance, you know, dance hall in general. So, of course, they're going to take, you know, her word for it because people may not know about dance hall, you know. So that's basically um, what she neglected to yeah. say, like, hey, this is a style of dance. It's a traditional West Indian um, style of dance, you know, and, you know, I'm just... Um, you know, I, I based my um, choreography on, you know, some of the moves that, you know, that the people have contributed exactly. over the but like years. But like, like you said, Courtney, it's so true. Like, people don't know. They don't know. And so by her omitting that, she's right. basically taking away credit where credit's yeah. due. Right. You can't simply say, oh, I take inspiration from the imagery in the room and not once mention dance hall and then right. talk about, well, in my classes and stuff, <laughs> I say dance hall. No. Like, right. It's, it's very like, misleading. Hey. It's very misleading because yeah. it's a whole culture for her to sit and do that. It's kind of like you're playing your fans, acting like you made it up, but you didn't. You weren't mm. the original. Give credit. <laughs> I mean, people don't want to give credit when it's due. They want to, yeah. you had help. Don't be afraid to say that you had help right. coming up. Right. And it's not even derivative. It's the moves. Like, I'm looking at the right. video and it's, I'm like, okay, that's the gully slide. That's the, you know what I mean? Yeah, bowling and, you know. <laughs> so all that wine, like, everything is there. I'm like, okay. Yeah, crazy. All that right, do better, funny. Paris. We love you, but do better. Do better. Aww. Yes. <laughs> Well, when we come back, we'll be right back with our reality recap, so stay tuned. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. This makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to What's the 4 and one And now it is reality TV recap time. Courtney, take it away. Okay, so Stevie J and Jocelyn Hernandez are at it again. They have a new show titled Stevie and Jocelyn Go to Hollywood. Yeah. Um, the show will premiere on January 25th on VH1. And the show's trailer um, shows Stevie J is making Jocelyn Hernandez, mm. and his, who's also his client, his wife mm. and his client, audition for his movie. And <laughs> he's getting into film now, or has he? Yeah, so well, that was one of the primary reasons mm -hmm. why they moved to Hollywood. Hollywood yeah. um, it was a spinoff from, you know, the uh, Atlanta series mm -hmm. of Love and Hip Hop. So, uh, and, and also, um, they were making fun of the trailer. Um, there's a clip where Jocelyn Hernandez is actually being booed on oh, stage no. in a live performance. Dang. So I just thought that, that was rather funny. It should be inter very interesting. I wonder if Mimi's going to make an appearance. M Mimi uh, definitely <laughs> made an appearance. I believe that in the last episode of Love and Hip Hop, um, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, she was asked to move 
to Hollywood as well what? with Stevie J because he didn't want to be away from his daughter Eva. Oh. That's right. I hate broken See, families, but I love seeing people co-parenting, you know, yes. and not looking. But there ratchet. might be more than that though, because remember they had the, yeah, they on had the, the reunion whole show. Right. They're oh, nice. They get along. <laughs> oh yeah, they get along. So it should be very spicy. So <laughs> and I think another person it. who's making an appearance is Lorian Gibson. The, yes, the, the choreographer, dancer. Yeah. Oh, yes. okay. Choreographer, choreographer yeah. which which she uh, was a big choreographer back in the uh, late '90s mm-hmm. when uh, Stevie J was with um, Diddy and mm-hmm. a part of that whole camp making the band. Yes. She was the oh, choreographer, and she was one of the choreographers. Yes, she worked closely with Puffy's uh, groups. You know, mm-hmm. um, doing the choreography and the moves and the steps and things like that. Mm-hmm. Diddy, she, oh. she's known Diddy. Diddy, Diddy, Diddy. <laughs> she, and she makes those those noises. Um, what's it called? Whenever she has. She's really known on the show for going making noises. What is it called? I don't uh, know. She, like when she dances, you know how you usually count with numbers. Mm-hmm. She's like bat that bat. bat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so funny. I really want to get a, take a class of hers. I used to dance. She dances at that pulse. Oh really? She chore- yeah, oh, she okay, choreographs. Nice. Take it pulse. and tell us about it. Bring her here for an interview. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, stay with us. We'll be right back with events in the pipeline. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy-saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Welcome back. Now we're bringing you events that are in the pipeline. So, the Dance Theater of Harlem will honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with a performance at New Jersey Pack on January 15th. Tickets are available through Ticketmaster.com. Nice. Tyrese and Red Run will premiere their new talk show, It's Not You, It's mm-hmm. Men, on OWN on January 23rd. The show is based on their relationship book, Manology, Secrets of a Man's Mind Revealed. Oh, that's yes. really yeah, that's funny. Funny. I gotta watch that. Oh, yeah, it should be really, really good. Mm-hmm. The Harlem Fine Art Show 2016 will take place at a historic Riverside church from February 4th to February 7th. Lupe Fiasco is releasing not one, but three new albums this year called Drogas, Skulls, and Roy. The albums will be accompanied by a national tour in January and February. He'll hit New York City on February 7th at the Highline Ballroom. Nice. There's no release date yet for the albums, but that's, oh, that's, that's really that's, cool. He's yeah. working. He's oh, working. Yeah, he's definitely definitely working. Mm-hmm. A lot of material's coming out yeah. in one year. Okay, so uh, a ladies' night R&B super jam will take place at the Barclay Center on February 12th. For so all the ladies out there, happy birthday, Kizzy. <laughs> Valentine's Early baby. Valentine's yes, Day. Yes, yes. Yeah. The show will feature Jodeci, Faith Evans, Jagged Edge, Black Street, SWV, The Locks, Carl Thomas, Total, and Black Rob. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster. Oh, that's nice. They're bringing yeah. in all those 90s oh, stars. Oh, yes. I love Black Ooh. Street, and I love Jagged Edge, and I love, I love Faith Evans. I love them all. I love, yes, I and love Jodeci, them all. And Jodeci, too. Oh. I love to hear them walk. Forever, my lady. Casey. Okay. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's to do it. This week's edition of What's the Four and One, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. I don't know where the time goes. But until next week, check out our website, what's the four and one dot com. And remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the Four One One TV. Please check us out and we just might mention you on the show. Yes. So I'm Casey Cox. And on behalf of Kissing Samaj and Courtney Rashawn, thank you for watching What's the Four and One. We will see you next week.